Greetings, Langonauts. We are back with another installment of the Ganonga Learning Series. I'm Peter. I'm Tyler. And let's get right into it. Today, one of our goals is to start entering the third story. So we need to, I believe we just finished the second story. Did we get it all in? Yeah, we can hardly wait to start on story three. Yeah. Okay, we did. Yeah, so we're just about ready for story three. Um, and Tyler, you said these are already broken into paragraphs. Yes. Paragraphs. Where is that at in our getting uh, for getting it into flex? It's good to use the the document called the one and that one, and it's right there at the top for right, you. It's right there at the top. Very convenient. So what I'm going to need to do is once I move these menus, right, open this up a little more so I can see it. Now I want to add a new text. So I'm going to go to this plus sign, and it says add a new text to the corpus. Corpus means body, and in this case, a body of text. So add a new text. The Ganonga title is... Tangi Tangi. Tangi Tangi Beto Mekania. So Tangi Tangi Beto. And Mekania is a name. So it's going to get a character. Capitalize that. And here we're seeing Beto to mean and, which I think is new. I think it's kind of a, has a then meaning. So and isn't, isn't so crazy off, so conjuncturally. I would not call it crazy. Yet. So the, the baseline, once again, that is where you just have your text in your target language, essentially nothing else. And those other tabs next to it are where you do the work. So talk briefly. So, so the provenance of this, Peter has a booklet that he bought in Solomon Islands that has this bilingual collection. He made a scan of that. I copied that, copied and transliterated that scan by hand into our spreadsheet. And for whatever reason, it does copy well from the spreadsheet into Flex. So I just made a, another generation of copy into this Word doc where it goes really smoothly. It's underlining those words in red there in flex because why does it think it's English? I'm not sure why it's doing that. We have one mega paragraph in this text, number six, that we'll just make the that tab a little wider. I'm going to, but what, what's frustrating is I would like to just scroll to the right, but it needs all this empty space on the left. It is frustrating. Uh, what you can do is click view in Google Drive and show print layout. That might save a little bit of space. I wonder if you can still copy easily though. Oh, that is, sorry, another layout. Uh, how's that? Mm -hmm. Or click the little print icon. Okay. On the line below. Outline. There we go. Yeah, okay. So you've got in paragraph four, five begins with Tonai. Nope, same sentence again. Okay. Yeah, so a slam dunk. We did get this uh, booklet, and Tyler has been entering them by hand. However, there is a way. Say you had an enormous booklet, uh, and you didn't have the patience to enter it all by hand, or maybe that was not possible. It would be wonderful if you had such an enormous text that it would be impossible to enter it all by hand. And you would be blessed. That would be blessed. Um, I have been working with a student at the university, and one of the things they have done is taken, I do have another text in another language, which is uh, so large that it is it would be quite a challenge to enter it all by hand, though not impossible, but it would take a ton of time. And the student has been working with a um, with Python, a programming language, and I understanding they're using... Um, this thing called Tesseract, and it is allows them to use Python to, you know, there's already kind of like OCR technology. It can read the OCR. What is OCR? What Peter. does it mean? Yeah, OCR. Oh, as soon as I Google it, I'll remember. By the way, you, you keep pasting and I can Google off the camera. <laughs> oh, yeah, let me do that. You Google it. I don't remember. I don't recall what OCR means. I think that optic character recognition. That's what it is. It's not in the field enough to know. 
in any case, oh, it's somewhat useful, but you have to combine it with other things to get it to really work. Uh, and one of our goals is to be able to make scans of books, so PDFs, because there are actually more old texts out there than you think. Mm -hmm. Right. So there are texts, particularly my understanding is, I think it was Sapir, maybe, who had a bunch of texts that were like in a warehouse or something, and they were discovered and brought to the Smithsonian. Um, these are for American languages, mm -hmm. uh, many of which the texts that they now hold at the Smithsonian, um, there is little else on these languages. So it is uh, a worthwhile pursuit. It looks like, though, with the advancements of machine learning and AI, that um, probably the problem that we're dealing with with the texts will be trivial within a couple of years. In any case, if you really want to know about the language, one of the very best things you can do is enter it by hand. And it has helped Tyler familiarize greatly, I can tell by when we're working on it, um, that Working with these texts helps you familiarize yourself with the. I really enjoy because it, it's a bilingual and it's page by page. You'll do a whole page in Ranonga, so you get to guess maybe <laughs> what the what the text might be talking about, and then you do a second pass of the same passage in English, and you confirm or disconfirm all those guesses that you made. And so I'd like to carry that kind of thing over here into this, and we're gonna. Go sentence by sentence without looking at the translation first. Uh, okay, let me see if I can see how we can do. Flex is a really great help to us now because we don't even have to look through. We don't have to scan either mentally or physically through our other corpus. It recognizes many of these words and it's guessing that in the turquoise. So the stories, yeah, I think it will be plural. I think like in Hawaiian, na is a plural article. No, okay, it's not. <laughs> I have it in uh, the English in front of me. I but think that... First... Go for it. All right, so uh, my guess on the translation, I did not look, even though it was up there for a second, I hadn't looked yet. Basically, these are the stories of Tangi, Tangi and Mekania that I will tell you. Something along those lines. Right. Let's check. My... I'll do my best not to look at the next one. I need to move this menu so I can more easily navigate. Which All right, I haven't even looked at the translation yet. This is the story of Tangi Tangi and Mekania. So this is their story. So it's not stories plural is the wrong gloss. It's really their story. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's going on. Yeah, I want their story here too. Very good. So let's add their Tangi Tangi and Mekania. These are names. They'll be all throughout this one. And for the English, our translation is using ng, tangi tangi. Let's care. Well, what do you think? We, that's something worth discussing. They just do ngi, ngi. We can keep the original spelling. Well, let me tell you why I'm against using ng. I can tell you, I know why they did it, mm -hmm. but I'm tell you why I'm against it. So I want to leave it in tangi tangi because. We've kind of discussed this before. There's two spellings of Ganonga, and it has to do with which missionaries uh, translated the Bible or whatever this certain with certain conventions. Even the name of the island, Ranonga, which many people call Ranonga now, mm -hmm. that was a mishearing of the voice velar fricative. Now, why might people think this? I believe it's because the French R is a bit like this, right? Uvular. So the French R is uvular or something. Will you give us a French R? Ugh. Ranonga. Yeah, so I've actually met linguists before Solomon, linguists who work in the Solomon Islands that say like, oh, Roviana has this, like, they'll say like, Roviana, Roviana, and I'm like, it's not like that. It's not like that. But I now understand why is because they, like they aren't looking at the spelling like I am and they aren't focusing on Roviana, but they hear the G sometimes. It sounds like the R they're looking for. And the R in Roviana is not Roviana, it's Roviana. And I messed it up because I didn't do the voice by labial fricative. In any case, I want to leave it as the Q because it's very clear that it's a pre in the orthography, it's a pre-nasalized velar stop. So when it's written correctly in the other orthography, it's NGG. Now, why would somebody write NG instead of NGG in the translation? The same reason that people in English write NG for both finger and singer. It's not 
it seems like a salient difference, maybe if you're learning a language, but if you speak a language as your first language, uh, you know that in Hawaiian, they use an okina and macrons. So macron, to, it's a, a line above a vowel that indicates the length of the vowel, right? And the okina is like, kind of looks like a apostrophe a little bit, and it indicates a glottal stop to sound in, uh-oh. Let's create and move on. Okay, well. I'm gonna make uh, it a proper name. Oh, I forgot to do that one thing. I'm gonna control click it. Right, yeah. If you forget or you improve your analysis later, you can just make these changes uh, under noun. Go up to noun and it's yeah, in the lexicon is where you'll make these changes as your as the structure of the language comes into focus, you'll you may wish. Another thing, if you're tired of looking at not sure, not sure, you can also hide that line. It's possible to do configure your interlinear. And then we get another name. And here, this meto will mean, will have the meaning of and. My point on the macrons in the Okina. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, it's a problem. <laughs> What's your point? My point is that um, there's been a lot of uh, discourse back and forth in the Hawaiian revitalization community about whether they really need macrons and okinas. And one of the arguments for excluding them is that speakers all know where they are anyways. And I believe that's what's going on with the NG stuff in the translation. The speakers of the language know where they are. So it's helpful enough for them. But for us as non-speakers, I want to keep it distinct. Varene. Oh, we're not. We're trying to guess the meanings without all let, the words yet. Let us do, yeah. And then one varene is capital and one is not. Ah, uh, should that be so? I wonder. You look look right quick. You're gonna look. Okay. Peter is. I'll have to check on that now. I've spent a good bit of time with this text. I can tell you what varene means. And since we're doing it this way, a new method. Should I just tell you what this word is? I have a guess. Okay. Um, I'm just checking right now to make sure that the right. that, that right. should be. That's the kind of mistake that uh, if you copy it from a PDF, if you just copy the text, you grab it there. It's the kind of mistake that it's likely to make. Yeah, that makes sense for our case. Okay, so I'm right. gonna that that encourages me on my guess. All right. Uh, I believe it means warrior. Okay, I, I would say hero or, yeah, warrior sounds right. But well, why did I guess this? You well, because <laughs> you're all-knowing? Finally, somebody admits it. Finally, <laughs> somebody gets me. Everybody knows that Peter's all-knowing. No, it's a word that's very special to me, for reasons I will not disclose. <laughs> the Roviana word is um, varane. Interesting. If you were to check... Please fill it in. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. The v, the v must come from a P at the oldest stage, right? I believe the oldest stage, it comes from a B. But that's Ooh. pre pre oceanic stage. This one, okay. I believe, goes all the way back to Proto-Austronesian. Wow. Barane. Very bold. Barane. Barane. No, the... Capital R is a single tap, I believe. Barani. Oh, I'll go back to PMP. Hero. Very good, Tyler. War leader. Dare to do. Valiant. PMP, for those, for those who don't know it, Proto-Maleo-Polynesian. That's right. So here we're uh, referencing the Austronesian Comparative Dictionary online. Uh, look, they've only got it in these ones, but now they need Varene from Ganonga. Now, one of the things, say we put Varene in our list. Now, I'll show everybody a sneak mm. of something we've been working on. <laughs> you were among the first people to see it, depending on the year you're watching this. Yes, that's right. If you're watching this a thousand years from now, hopefully somebody else yeah. has seen this. We hope. It but you so might still be among the first. I, there's not that much interest. Yeah. Uh, so here what I've done is I've taken a ro uh, Ganonga word, say now, Tosa, to set on a voyage. Question real quick. That item Ia in the line below, do you mean the suffix? Uh yeah, although we've seen it written by itself sometimes too, but have we? Just IA? Have we not? 
I'm going to click that. There's one way to find out. No hits of just IA as a single word. No hits. As, so one thing you want to make sure about as a if you're a budding linguist or even an experienced one is that you keep track of the status of these little pieces. Is this a word or is it a word part? Well, I know that it came from the proto-oceanic word, which I suspect may have also been a suffix, but there's not that's not very much agreed upon. All the more uh, reason to be careful. <laughs> I know that ia in Roviana is a suffix because of the phonological stuff, and we can tell it is here because the way it changes sounds when it touches stuff. However, I do often see the suffix agreements written mm. as separate particles the same way. I'm pretty sure the va causative is a prefix, not something that's its own word, although it's always written as its own word. True, true. So anyways, we're looking at these words, and I went to the Austronesian Comparative Dictionary to look for proto-oceanic forms. And if they had them, I put down Proto-Malayo-Polynesian, Proto-Austronesian, and in some cases, Proto-Eastern Malayo-Polynesian. So now, these are in chronological order then, right? What's that? These are not in chronological order in your spreadsheet. No, I just care most about Proto-Oceanic, so I put that one first. And this is more like a notes section, just other oh, stuff yeah. that might be important to know. And I like to know when something goes all the way back to Proto-Austronesian. I just like to know. Sure. So I have it there. Um, what is the X in the PMP and Proto-Austronesian? Um, Segment X. Bottle stop? No, that's is that a Q? I think it might be voiceless velar fricative, but uh, I'd have to look up into that specifically. Right. Lost I'd in look. Roviana and Ganonga. And you see here, I've started a sheet where I'm comparing words in Roviana and Ganonga. And I'm proposing Proto-New Georgia reconstructions. So based on ego and ego, I would guess that probably they shared ego as their uh, agreement at some point. And I haven't filled out all of them, just a couple of them. But what is an interesting one here is Varane, Varene. So if we wanted to compare this, add this to the list, we'd have Varene and Varane and something like warrior or hero or whatever. And we could add in our, what I need to do is um, it freeze those. So view. Sorry, all the menus are mine. I, I froze the the first. Yeah, interesting. It, it's frozen for me, but weird that it's not for you in the same the same spreadsheet. When I'm going down for the Proto New Georgia, I would put, I don't know, right? I don't really know yet. I don't really understand. Question right. marks. Uh, but then we could go and look and see in the mm -hmm. and see, well, it's Parane or whatever the capital R means. Oh, it's, you're in that second tab. That is why. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the second tab. Oh, so I'm always a little more on the rope, the, the proto New Georgia thing, since I think that it's not really well understood. So at POC, it's there's supposed to be a star, Parane. And we know back at PMP, it was the same, but with a B. Barani. So that's an interesting change. Uh, I believe that PMP, so my details, my memory of PMP is a bit fuzzy. Um, let me enter this in while I'm thinking. The reason I don't necessarily remember everything off the top of my head is I remember things that are really salient to what I do mm -hmm. in Roviana and Nalgananga. Uh, and everything else, I just look it up. So I may be misstating something. So if, for example, Dr. Alex Smith, the, one of the leading Austronesianists, if he happens to watch this, I doubt it. But if he did, he might be like shaking his fists at the screen saying, no, it's a, but uh, I think one of the reasons you get this occurrence of A instead of E and POC is because um, I don't believe that there was mid vowels in PMP. They just had A, E, U. And All right. Cool. And schwa. Mm. Um, so, for example, if we look at the word for taro, it was talos. That became uh, talos. Getting a bit sidetracked. Let's go back to... A little bit sidetracked. I don't really want to enter words without looking at the translation, but we could take a guess okay. at the translation first. Yeah, yeah. It's just identifying our... I'm guessing that tangi tangi is a warrior from nonotongare, uh, and Makinia is a Varane from Nango. I missed the punctuation there. Oh, they even use the word warrior? Okay, so we're no, going to no, go no. ahead and update 
Varane. We'll call it Warrior. Very nowny. I'm so nowny. I'm going to go ahead and wow, a rare honor for a word. I I don't like to enter in the word gloss, but I will. Nonotongare. We know this is a place. And we should, when we start seeing our places here. Oh, wrong, wrong letter after the T there. Oh, I... easy mistake to make. What? I wonder what Tongere means. It could be a language of, you mean, in whatever language it originates from. With place names, be really, really careful to etymologize them. Oh, yeah. I Now I'm actually going to go to the definition here, and I'm going to start doing this whenever a place pops up. And I'm going to say, uh, name of a place. Mm -hmm. I'm searching in our spreadsheet for T-O-Q. There's that string of sounds. It happens only in place names. Does it happen in other place names? Yes, other place names too. Well, I have a guess at what Thongiri means. I believe it means mountain. How enticing and intriguing. Oh, these menus are in my way. Let's see if it gives us mountain. Seven hits. Inona. Toa. So Toa also means a live strong. Tonger. Okay. So that's what I was looking for there when I saw Tongere. What was it in Rubian again? Exactly the same Tongere. Yeah. Tongere, probably. Tongere. I was wondering, yeah, I wonder where this dress would be. The e seems like, final E seems like it'd be an echo vowel. You never know. So I'm guessing that is Mount No No. What so. you could do is put that in the note field, your conjecture, a couple lines up. Perhaps a word for mountain or something. Other place where we saw it was when it mentioned the stone altars that, that the same syllable tonge or sequence tonge. Okay, fun. let's look at our next sentence. We have a lot of words in this one. Ruru who is a person. One of the reasons I know is that is the person article coming right before it. Mai tangi tangi korina isomona azamaka iso. So oh, there, like, okay. it yes. But go hold on, we got it. Let's let's discuss it. Take a look at the booklet there. I'll tell you what I think's happened. But why don't you spend a moment with that? So in that sentence we have izongona, a few words before azamaka, and then it says izongona. And that kind of thing happens a few times. Azairuruhu. Where else does that happen? Uh, let's see. The next sentence we have a, okay, it's not the very same thing, but in the next sentence, first one of paragraph two, we have a spelling T-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. We start getting these closed syllables in the written forms. What do you think's going on, Peter? Do we actually have closed syllables in this language? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think this text happens to have a lot of errors. In paragraph three, page 24, it's the first paragraph. Second sentence, we have a spelling, munjung nunju. I know what that word means. And if you look at the sentence before it, it's the very first one on that page, munju munju. So what do you reckon? I think it's an angma. Uh huh. Uh, and they're just. I have a guess. Okay, what's your guess? I have a guess too. As to why the spelling. So I know the meaning of munju munju instantly. It's cognate with Rovian and muzu muzu. Interesting correspondence there. Yes. Okay. See you later. <laughs> I think Peter has a muzu muzu. This is a muzu muzu. Not a not a super prototypical one, but a beautiful one, probably from Hawava, based on the. Or uh, Marovo, based on you the. May, you may want to turn off your background blurring because it's 
acting all liminal. Yeah, it's on purpose. Okay, that's pretty stable, but then it just the, the <laughs> camera, the software can't what? make up its mind whether to blur or not to blur. Maybe the Muzu Muzu is supposed to be a secret. That one is carrying a skull, which means I'm on a mission of war. If the Muzu Muzu is carrying a bird, you're on a mission of peace. There's other possible missions, but we're not going to discuss it. I have a guess it's what's going on with the spelling variation. Please tell me your guess. Okay, so when you get the Engma next to the N, it's just mm -hmm. indicating an Engma. And again, for the listener, that's the sound in singer. Singer. Ner. Uh, we can't say nga or ngu in English, but you could in other languages. What's <laughs> going just... on here? I know. Or I have a guess. So what happens is, is you get an M. Great. There's a Roman letter for that. You get an N. Also great. There's a Roman letter for that. It makes a lot of sense. Well, you get a palatal nasal, like a nya type sound. Well, there's not exactly a, pal a, a Roman letter for it, but NY works so well. It just kind of makes sense. It's really mm -hmm. thematic. But when you get to Engma, people tend to write NG in English for same, since we don't have a single letter for it. But there are other possible solutions. For example, an NG is good because it, let me say this, NG is good because it uh, okay. identifies the place of articulation as velar. But another possible solution would be simply to write N twice. I believe that this is a convention reflecting just writing N twice for Engma. What do you think? I agree. I agree completely. That is my take too. When they wanted to write the sounds, this this scribe of this story, I feel like it's a different person inputting the text. They were used to representing N as double N, which is perfectly available. It's not going to cause any conflict in this language because there are no closed syllables. And then it was just imperfectly converted to ng or actually the convention in this book is just underlined well and the double end solution is better than the underlying solution because the underlying solution is not easy typographically right so i agree yeah it takes ng or okay. nn is a better solution and that mm -hmm. makes me wonder about the island of tana should it be tanga the first thing i ever thought of was tana in vanuatu and i was like well they aren't talking about tana in vanuatu so Tana Island sometimes misspelled Tana. It's really an Engma, is that what you're telling me? No, now I'm guessing myself. Why did they why did they spell it with two N's? Okay, uh, tanic. Tana. Tana. Tanic. Okay. Well, maybe. Whatever the Q represents, not knowledgeable enough at this stage. Tanic with the same meaning, but no explanation of what the meaning is. <laughs> well, it, yeah, that's that's kind of what I thought there actually. Um Good name that's for an island. This, that's why this name is probably pretty stable uh, throughout. You're going to see it in a bunch of different languages. They have an Iban that's in Borneo, Javanese, although they don't. Uh, Ebonic, cool language name or uh, family name. Yeah. Bonics. So, what do we want to do in ours? We want to put brackets on it or just really assume that it's a single mole syllable at this word we're encountering? Well, we have another option. So okay. what's the meaning of the word we can discuss? We can the yeah. So I believe I know what Izumona is. I have a guess. Okay, what's your guess? I I I sh I, I know my guess is wrong now because now I'm looking at the thing. I, <laughs> I might, well, I'm not going to share my wrong guess now that I know it's wrong. Why would you? Yeah. Ruru, who is a name. Yes. And we can guess that Izumona is name, the word for name. Yes. It even has a Cognitive in Hawaiian. So what I'm going to do here is go to analyze. Do you have a Do you have a guess on? I think the, the nice suffix. It's possessive marker. Do you have any etymological guesses on izongo? Uh, let's see. Inoa, Inoa, I think it is in Hawaiian for name. Let me check. I don't know the, oh, I think in Indonesian, it's like Nama or something for name, which would, would probably from Sanskrit. So Hawaiian name, Inoa. Yes, I-N-O-A, Inoa. Seems like a good match to me with some alteration. Isi son, songwo, snout. You're looking for this. The string ESO, okay. Yeah, the ESO is in there, but it's not giving me exactly what I want. 
very soon. <laughs> Disorderly. I'm surprised this is giving me such a hard time. I'm going to look for word face. Quite a lot of these, too. Surface. I want to go back to just the English list real quick. Oop, too far. Isumata. Isumata. So you know Mata. I. I. I'm just going to scroll down to the end. That's E-Y-E, not the pronoun, but the body part with which you see. That I. A little bit quicker this way. Looking for nose now. Have Happens to match the modern Greek word for I, but no deep connection there. No deep connection. Let's look for nose right quick. Ah, pretty close. Mati in Greek. And we want nose and mouth. Nose. Want... Do not. Why nose? We're looking for name. Are we? <laughs> I see. You have a different idea. You think that Ruru is not a name but a nose? No, I think the word for name comes from the word for face. I see. Well, that makes me think of the Japanese word for name, namae, where mai is the word front. So you've got izong, izongo. And if we take a quick look at what we've got so far between Roviana and Gananga, we'll see uh, a DS beta. correspondence. So, beta. What was that? <laughs> I see you've input betas in the Granonga spelling. I and gamma. You have looks like two different gammas. I've inconsistently betaed. <laughs> My favorite kind of beta is an alpha beta. Paradoxical. That's like you with two PhDs. Paradox. I would love to do a second PhD. I thought it was extremely fun. There we've got I broke down. So, by the way, as a note, as how I'm doing this, I found yeah. Tamatazi and Tamatasi as family. I'm into X. Right. So I didn't actually find Tazi or Ta or or Tama in Gananga, at least, as the words for father and sibling. But I understood father and sibling together was the uh, cool. way to, to make family. So I put this here in italics and then broke down the compound. Compounds are pretty good at preserving old stuff. Yes, they're extremely cool. And so all if you want to know about sound changes, compounds are going to be your friends. And there we've already got Nguju and Nguzu, because I already knew. So you, you knew it. Now, what I would do, in the case of Tama and Tazi, if it were me, I would put a little asterisk with it, because you haven't seen it as its own word. It would be pretty bold. If you're wanting to do scholarly work, you really need to... Well, that's why I put it in italics, because I didn't want oh. the asterisk to be confused with a historical form. But... Wait, so it's in italics because that's a word that occurs? This is the word that actually occurs, the compound, and I'm breaking it down here. So I, if anything, I would italicize the ones that you're... Okay, point take. Yeah. Be really careful about what you actually encountered and what not. It's really easy to create so-called ghost words, ghost lexemes, things that a dictionary has that aren't actually real in the speech community. And that don't do nobody no good. All right, let's go back to Izo Ngona. And I have a solution here, and I'm sure you've thought of something similar. So I'm going to call Izo Ngo name, even though I have a guess on etymology here. That's it. Um, That's interesting stuff. I like that, that it's connected to snout. Your name is your linguistic snout or face. I Yeah, I think, well, and you can see that, like, you can't see, it's not very clear from, hold on. From this, but if we look at the Roviana one, Nguju, um, Muzu is snout. Muzu is snout, and the Muzu Muzu I showed you didn't have a long snout, but I have like several of them here, and some of them have very long snouts. And that this one's... is an important part of why it's called a Muzu Muzu. It's something you tie to the front of a war canoe. It is the snout of your boat, of your canoe. Okay, yeah. that has a long snout on it, right up, straight up. That's why. That's um, and one of the I'm trying not to digress too much, but one of the reasons that this is probably called this way is because the the minate, so mate is death or die, mm. and then you put in inside of it, it's death. This means like spirit and rovia and minate. And the minates, and we've seen a little bit about the minates in this book, or we're going to see them. And if you look at, there's a, a video you can see online told by uh, Sai Oka, a Roviana kind of creation story type thing. 
I believe Peter Shepard and others have worked on it. It's on YouTube. It's all in Roviana, but they have a link. You can look at a Google Doc to the English version of the entire story and read it. And the, the Roviana people descend from the Minate Tiola, which is one of the reasons they call each other Tio. And Tiola was the dog Minate, hence having a long snout. Tiola, not that they descend from that's not the right way to say it. Tiola taught them how to build a war canoe and how to build a house on stilts. And his he married a Roviana woman and lived on Nusa Roviana and he turned to stone. And interestingly, people tried to steal the stone in recent years and um, a bunch of bad things befell people and it was returned. This is my understanding. If you know the story in detail or contradict it, please come on. Let's have a podcast. Let's talk about it. I'd love to know. Like, I'm going to call Izongo, going all the way back, I'm still going to call Izongo face. Face or name? Or name. I'm going to call it name. <laughs> we'll leave the etymology aside for now. Um, I'm going to call it a noun. Dang. You know what? I'm going to leave it un unsure. Just a little bit. All right. Secretary, not sure. Now, how are we going to deal with Izongo na? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slice off this na. Totally fine. This, I'm going to create a variant of like it i'm gonna we can even in the bottom right you can specify what kind of variant let's say it's What's a interesting is the iso is bonito super cool you can specify what kind of bonito variant it is does it have a uh, prominent snout the bonito i don't think okay could I be just iso, i think iso means nose next accidental, accidental resemblance muzu means snout I see. Nose and snout are different as they are in English, although they do have that sound symbolism, sniff, snake, snout, etc. Okay, we, we just had that nose up here a second ago. Where the heck is it? Prominent nose, looking at these few images. Yeah, Isu. Isu. So Isu, Isu is separate from Muzu. You can tell because the, the sound correspondence is J and Z versus S and Z. So division between, that's fascinating. Division they're between. They're similar looking, but not necessarily the same word. And what it comes from. Uh, in the case of Bonito, I don't know. But Tyler and I barely mentioned when I'm creating this variant, I can create a spelling variant. So I could have unspecified variant wherever. I'm calling this a spelling variant. It's as simple as that. There's nothing more complex to it. I'm adding variant and it will now know, boom, plus spelling variant of. We get to preserve, sorry, we get to preserve our original spelling, but tie it with the other instances of the word. I think everybody's happy. Speaking so, for everyone, we're happy. Ruru who is a name, so we're going to call it Ruru who. We're going to call it a proper noun as soon as I can. I, I don't know why I always miss this noun thing. I can't see it. There it is. All right, let's see if this all occurs in the Roviana dictionary. I doubt it. Ah, twice. To shed its shell? Huh. Kapehe, Ruru who, et cetera. Okay. What kind of shelled animal? What kind of animal sheds its shell? Indeed. I never saw a turtle do that. That would be catastrophic. Think about kind of animals that might oh. be salient. Hermit crabs. That's right. That's correct. A tree, tree farming farm. land crab, which opens and eats coconuts, is the ruru. -ru How cool. Uh, so they can they can molt and shed their shell as well. Now, they have a word for hermit crab, komba, which goes, it's a it's an Austronesian word. It's a retention. This is the Roviana Dictionary, by the way. Yeah, right. We should be clear who we're talking about. This episode. But if you have been watching, you know that we look at the Roviana Dictionary sometimes when we're questioning about Ganonga. And the reason is because there are related languages and Roviana has a dictionary. Uh, and so it helps us piece things together. So the Ruruhu is a tree climbing crab. Now, I learned the word Ruruhu as a name, too, because a woman sung a song to me about the Ruruhu, and he had a walking stick, and like the beat the walking stick makes. That's cool. So I knew that Ruruhu was a name of like a, and I thought it was a current hermit crab or something like that, that loses its shell. Moving on, we know what Ruruhu is. I don't know if this will impact us in the story, but it's interesting to know, oh, he has this other name, Ruruhu. He's a he's a lingu his by having two names like a hermit crab he wanders from covering to covering. Very nice. There are I, mean, I saw a lot of hermit crabs when I was in Roviana territory too. So we have two two numerals in that one sentence, which is pretty cool. 
kind of rare. Kuri, the numeral two. Maka, the numeral one. But Tangi Tangi, two, the names. Aza, what's that one doing? Of which one name? But. I could work out. Oh, it's going to be happy. Two names. That one name? Of his. Okay. I think Aza following there is going to be possessive. One name, two names of him. One name of him is, is this Ruruhu. I don't think it's possessive. Okay. But uh, uh, it's very different than Za, though. If it was Za, we'd be like, one name is. Uh -huh. That one name, that's Ruruhu. Intriguing stuff. And I believe relative? Aza means it, but it just can be used it that I, we've seen there's other things for that. Why's my guess here? Okay. <laughs> if I'm out in Roviana and I'm hanging out with my uncles and I do something good instead of bad, which you might not know it. You might think you're going to be good at important island stuff, but if you're not from the environment, you're probably not very good. My yeah, case. I'm not even good at stuff locally here in Texas. Just this language stuff. So I think you're not good at locally here in Texas. <laughs> name one thing. Oh, <laughs> Tyler's using my own medicine against me. It's one of my favorite responses to anything. Name one thing. Just one thing. Okay. When I'm doing something good instead of bad, my Roviana friend might say to me, Asa. That's it. That's it. Mm, attaboy. Or like Asa Mo, just that. Mo is only. Nice. They won't say Asimo in the same situation. Just giving you two instances of where it, he, she, it also kind of has a that meaning. And that's why Aza, why I'm guessing it here. <laughs> so now another one that we could, another new, a new sentence confronts us that we could tr try to figure out sight unseen. Aza gave, uh, okay, a causative there. Va transitive looking. Making sense for a causative. They're always going to be transitive. So we have Zaya's embark. Zaya. Uh, mm. Oh, so this Tanna. It could be a place name, but that double N is likely a euthanasal. Yeah, I'm going to guess that it's actually Tanna. Tanna. If we wanted to create an entry for it, we could create a spelling that we haven't actually seen as the, as the head, as the lemma. Well, before I enter it, I would like to take a look at the translation, and so I'm going to try yeah. to take a guess first. <laughs> that's, that's a good procedure, I think. I, do we want to take a stab at the meaning of, from what we're, what we're showing? So, Regia, I don't know, but it's caused. So, Two causes. they caused... So, they caused to embark the warrior from no... no. Don't go I'm guessing Rereg, that's Regia, is Ia is a mm -hmm. subject agreement. Object. Yeah. Um, and I guess that Mechania is the object here, the thing being caused. Can't be the subject because the subject is plural. That's one of my main reasons for guessing there. Although I, we have an interesting opportunity here with this person marking. Uh, I don't think all of our speakers have been as consistent with person marking as this one. Um, if let me give a spoiler, so so listeners can <laughs> guess where I'm guessing from. Instead of spoiler. constant mystery, uh, we've already gone past the point of we're not referring to anything else. We refer to the ACD, we refer to Roviana sound changes, refer to Roviana dictionary. Let me say something I have my eyes peeled for. In Roviana, an ergative argument that's in the post-verbal position cannot have the person marking. It will be absent. Where the person marking is very obligatory in Roviana, it's not seen. But this speaker seems to be pretty consistent with it. So if it's missing from one place, we'll have our eyes peeled for it. My guess is that it won't be. Um, I Keep think your eyes out for those missing things, everyone. That the, will make you at least we, have unknown, we have unknown unknowns and known unknowns. Yeah. Uh, and Nomuro is an unknown or a known unknown. I know that I don't know it. I bet mm. that Tana is Tanga. The place name? No, 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 no. 
Oh, the the actual lexeme, the vocabulary. Word. I don't think that Tana here is cognate with the Tana in Vanuatu, because I know the Tana in Vanuatu really has an N sound. This one, I think, has an angma. I think it does too. I'm just looking in the booklet. It has double N, uh, yeah, and it's lowercase. Okay. So well, let's go ahead let's, and spoil let's, it. And let's, the yeah, let's do. We just are missing certain keywords. I think that we're not quite close enough yet to get. If we see a good one, we'll try to guess. But something like this, we can't really guess it. I mean, it's good for us to sharpen our eyes. We might notice things this way that we otherwise would be and less. So likely. quickly, the things heard about Mekania came to that warrior from Nonotongere. Mm -hmm. So, so kind of this storyteller. Oh no, no, it, it told us just now. Because we, the Tangi Tangi is the one from Nonotongere. That's also called Ruruhu. Yeah, and Mekani is from Nango. Nango. Okay, M and N together. Mekania, Nango. So that warrior from Nonotongare, it's just another way to refer to this one character. Instead of naming him each time, tell us where he's from. The things heard about him, the things made known, could that be what the causative is doing there in the first clause? Nomoro. What is the... Well, I have a feeling that Zai still means embark. Zai, okay. Because right, we saw Zai, Azai, and we just said a Zai means like embark or something like that, right? I don't recall. I'm going to check. Yeah, let's look at the lexicon. I'm going to go to glosses, organize them that way. Oh, I'm doing this the wrong way. I'm literally mean to be looking for headwords. Yeah, just click the button and alphabetize this. Yep. Other other direction. So we have Zaya and Bark. To board a board a vessel. Wondering, X, dear listener, please recall X is a hyphen in the actual text, and we're representing with an X. And I originally thought that it was some sort of um indication of a suffix or something, that they were just aware of it a little bit, because I knew what Leia meant. But when we first start with Leia X. Mm -hmm. Leia E. That's right. Yeah. But we've now seen that Leia can stand on its own as a word, too. However, there was the actual noun where it had the X in it always. It was the bread word for breadfruit, which it always had it in it. But here we have it with embark. So since it's causative, very likely to be transitive, we're, I think we're looking at Zae. Verb root and then the suffix ia, and here it's coming out as zaya, ah, I guess. Yes, I agree with you 100%. And I think what's going on is you can't have a sequence of three vowels typically. It's not good, so it has to be marked with something. Four vowels is absolutely out of the question. <laughs> let me so, let me present another, another analysis real quick. Okay. Maybe the root actually ends in a glottal stop and they just don't bother to spell it. When it doesn't have a suffix, it could be the word is zayet, but it surfaces or it becomes more salient when you add a suffix to it, and then that's in a. No, that would have a coda. That that doesn't work. Well, let's check because we know what Leia is an Austronesian word. If it has okay. a coda in the, in the proto form, then would we it be possible? Yeah. Could you have a language that allows only one coda and it's the glottal stop? Does that seem plausible? Can you pause that? Maybe just underlying yeah. that. So what would really be going on is we ha we already proposed that there's underlying codas. Yeah. And that's you right. get echo vowels. Paro, paro, so it's pretty paro, surprising paro. there's no echo vowel here. There's already a mechanism to handle this. There could be. It could be zai uh, e, maybe, and they don't bother to write the second e. Uh, so tracking back to what you said a second ago, could it be that this ends in glottal stop or something? I'm willing to entertain the idea that there's multiple solutions for the coda problem. And that for most codas, you get the echo vowel, but maybe there's one coda, a rare coda, let's say, where you get, mm. uh, I believe that Russian does this also. Like you only get in the plain form, you don't get certain codas, but they appear when suffixed or something like this. I remember solving a phonology puzzle and I don't know anything about Russian. So, but listeners are more likely to know about Russian than the examples I would bring up which is this happens quite frequently in Polynesian. It's called the C-I-A suffix. C meaning any consonant. 
And what happens is you see a word like we get gara, garata for bite. Well, if this was a Polynesian word, it'd be gara, except when there's an object, then it'd be garatia. And then you look at a different word with a different code to say rereg. And normally you'd get rere, but then when you would get it with an object, it'd be reregia. And there were all these papers back in the day about, they called them thematic consonants. Mm -hmm. What does a T mean? What does yeah. it mean? <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. It's they tried to find semantic things linking it, but the best solution is that in the proto form, they had kodos, and it only appears in this one context. So we're going to go ahead and look for Leia. So I'm going to start Speakers. by looking for L. Speakers and learners of French might recognize this sort of a quadrant. French has seen lots of deletion historically. And in certain constructions, consonants pop up out of nowhere that are otherwise silent. Il fait, he does, fait-il. When you invert them, suddenly your verb has a T on it. It's not giving me anything. It's a similar situation to this. Sorry. This sentence is a challenging one, I think, to match word meaning, to align clauses to get the right word meanings. I think it's more, more challenging than most of the ones we've seen. So I'm going back to Roviana now to see if they even have Roviana's Leia in the Austrian Comparative Dictionary. Wait, too far. Oh, you're right. I got scrolling. I just got caught up. Leona throat. Hmm. No, it's not in there. Now, this is interesting. I wonder if the Hawaiian word will be in there, and they'll say it comes from an R or something, which would undo my hypothesis. What you got to understand is I want to undo my hypothesis. I want to disconfirm it. I don't want to be correct because it leaves me hanging. <laughs> what I want, because you're correct. If you're correct, you aren't certain you're correct, if that makes sense. Ah, uh, this goes, yeah. like. The, but you well, can be certain you're wrong. And so science, sometimes you don't prove your hypothesis. You can only disprove. That's right. They don't have Leia in here. Lie. Well, we haven't seen it yet. <laughs> you have to go down a little bit. Leia is under. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> no, they have Leo Vostoint also from throat. No, they aren't going to have it. Okay. That's interesting to me. I was surprised to word. Let's, let's look it up. Meaning of Hawaiian word Leia. Joy, gladness, pleasure. That's pretty interesting. They have this same <laughs> word in Hawaiian, meaning the same thing we see in Ganonga, but it's not in the Austronesian Comparative Dictionary. Now, the Austronesian Comparative Dictionary is Bob Blust's solo work until now when Dr. Alex Smith has taken it over. So we can't appeal to the Austronesian Comparative Dictionary. It doesn't know everything. But there is another. <laughs> I have three of the five volumes of lexicon of proto-oceanic we're not going to get into it today i mean i'm going to get into this today we're not going to get into this during this recording but i'm going to have to look and see if there is nobody has noticed this leia connection we'll call were it you mean were you meaning to allude to star wars when you said but there is another yes and who that's who yoda was talking about when he said there is another it was oh leia. my goodness was leia oh my goodness oh my goodness i <laughs> I didn't even mean to. That was so, that was so good. I wish should have taken credit for that. I love that. I wish I had thought of it. All right. So going back to our task of the day. Um, I don't know what to do. Did we already search for Tanga and see if Tanga occurs anywhere? Well, just in the no Pongo we saw, but Tanga. Oh, in our collection so far. Yeah, just T A Engma. Mm, a little hard to look. For. Okay, I'm on it. Or are you on it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you give it a look right quick. Or I guess I got Paranga right here, Al. Oh, you have a, yeah, you have a glottal stop. That's the problem when you have a special character that's not on your QWERTY keyboard. It'll take you a minute to track it down, potentially. Mm -hmm. So a double, a spelling like double N, I almost kind of want to replace all of ours with, <laughs> with double N. I like it so much. There's no doubt I like the double N. Well, double N occurs twice. I'll do your own. With Tana. The disadvantage is that if you have outsiders coming in trying to learn your language, they're going to misread it. Yeah. We would have started by saying it as an N sound, not knowing anything. Whereas an underlined N, well, I say we, Peter would have would have been hip to it. Zaye, uh, uh, I'm still going to call it Embark, and I'm going to do this as a Alamor. Yep. That would be my suggestion, too. Of e, uh, so yeah, don't worry about that go-to window. It's just to help you find the thing. It's not going to add new info. So 
I'm tempted to link it. I like linking things in flex cause to embark. I would put the prefix with it. But Peter is a splitter. I tend to lump these things. I am a, I am a splitter because I just like to read cause embark. Okay. That's I like awesome. it. Uh, as for Tana as Tanga, it does seem like it could mean place, but we've got a lot of things we think mean place because place... This is the thing, there's subtleties in the word that we're missing and we're just calling it all place or whatever, which is the best we can do for now. But what yeah. if we can do something better with Tanga? Of course, we're going to have to look at Roviana. See if we can make any guess. So I'm going to look for Tana. Nine hits. So it's spelled, then, yeah. it's good. Because it'll be spelled with an N with a little line under it, if it is. No, this is going to be italicized here. Oh, that's right, italicized. So species <laughs> three orchid. Orchid, that's just a plain dental N. Tidy. Plain ends. Plain end. Navasina tana batu. Batu tomate. Yeah, so this tana tio hiko hiko. I love how it gives no gloss at all. <laughs> it's just listed. It's a person of the hiko hiko. How's that confusing? Oh, okay. well, pardon me. I'm joking. I don't know what hiko hiko means. We have to look it up. I bet it contains the answer in the dictionary. What you're seeing here is that Tana means kind of like singular um, of type thing. Servant of all. Mm -hmm. Meaning all. Nambalu must mean servant. Mm -hmm. This is actually my thought there. I'm torn if Tana is just spelled with two N's for fun. <laughs> Funner with two ends. I don't know if it's really Tanga or not. If it's really just an N and not an Engma. Can you search for the net for the following hits in, in your dictionary? Let's see if we get any good Tanga candidate candidates. There could also be a difference in vowel. I've seen ah correspondences with other vowels between these two languages. That's a plain N. So easy to make a mistake if it's just italicized, though. Ridiculous. Yeah, we're not. It seems to be pretty well at the dictionary from the glimpses I've had here. The dictionary is pretty good. The Roviana dictionary uh, is pretty old, but even back it, then, it is quite exceptional. In my experience using in these kind of older dictionaries, originally meant for missionary use. So mm -hmm. the Roviana dictionary is originally put together by Waterhouse in like the 20s. And then another missionary came by, Lina Jones. I understand she's a missionary. I don't know that much. I've seen her notes. I talked this before. Uh, and I think Lina Jones was the genius that made it very coherent. But Waterhouse was like a, a, a pretty good... I think there was a family of Waterhouses too. This might have been the son of the Waterhouse that was the missionary in Fiji or something like this. Jeez. I don't okay. recall. Al Sheets told me all about it. And I regret not writing more of it down because he can't tell me again. Though he left books, and I can read the books, and I have them. So let's leave Tana for now. Um, Ray Regia, I would like to separate it off the object agreement, because I'm pretty confident about that. But I don't know the rest, so I'm going to do a quick search for Ray Ray. Don't let us down, Ray Ray. No, nothing. Single instance, yeah. I think, I feel like initial R is Ted on the rare side. We have this Ruruhu. I want. Oh, can you go to the lexicon real quick? And go to Ranonga R initial words. How many do we have? Rane, Rapat. Rane, which we know is alone. Wow. Rapat, okay. battle. Rauru, which we know is alone. Rave, I don't think that's alone. Reiko, I kind of don't think that's alone. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> let me introduce. Let me introduce the Zinama Liu Liu conspiracy of the Western Solomon Islands. Okay, this should go in the liner notes too. We should talk about this. This is a fun thing. Many people may not be aware, but lots of language communities invent speech disguise. So an example we have in English is called Pig Latin, and spoilers in case you don't know how Pig Latin works, <laughs> but you basically, you take the first consonant of a word, and you move it to the end, and put the sound A after it. Pig pay at lay. You would be eater pay, I'm either pay. 
Eiler Tay, perfect example. Tyler becomes Eiler Tay. Well, when I was a kid, I remember I figured out how Pig Latin worked and not everybody in my class did. Uh, and I, for about 20 minutes, I was a little celebrity translating everybody's names. And it was wonderful. <laughs> Probably the reason I'm a linguist today. Anyways, some communities get into much more complex speech disguise, particularly in Tagalog. The speech disguise is designed to prevent older people from understanding what you're talking about, which means each cohort of school children changes it dramatically. And they use just fantastic morphology. Sapir would definitely call it radical. Mm. So I discovered that they have Xinami Liu Liu. I did discovered. They know about it. They told me. I eventually learned that <laughs> they have Xinama Liu Liu in Robiana. And Liu Liu is like upside down. Xinama meaning language. Zama meaning speak. Xinama language. Upside down language. Tremendous. Okay. And so you can change certain words. Um, and I, I don't recall. I've written about it in manuscripts. So unpublished. Um, and I don't recall the specific rules, uh, but if I recall correctly, it's not that different than Pig Latin. I think you move the first syllable of something to the end or something like that. Okay. Does and it, it break do it down further or does it move both syllables only? What's that? Does it break a syllable into onset coda or does it keep the syllables itself, themselves intact? Codas are forbidden in Robiano. So I'm sorry, onset and, and vowel. And onset yeah, it nuclear. keeps onset and vowel together. It keeps the whole thing together. You said forbidden but i've heard other stories there is a story the jedi wouldn't tell you <laughs> look uh you can check out i have a presentation online on youtube on my my own personal channel peter shulky mysterious um sequences in roviana something like this Constant right, sequences. you can Good. check it out if you like to dear reader or listener it's not that important my main point about xenami liu liu is i have sat with roviana people asking them about the xenami liu liu and about words and my Roviana best friend told me that it's it's common in these situations to know with, say, hundreds of words in other languages nearby. In America, this would be wild. You're a multi-crazy polyglot. There, oh, no, I just know 100 words in that language. It's not a big deal. People know dozens of Spanish words without batting an eye. but They do. Uh, it would be more pronounced in other places, that phenomenon. Yeah, especially when it's so similar. So... I remember him pointing out, I have to find in my notes, basically the idea that the words for male, Koreo, and Robiana, he said, oh, over in this language, it's this, Zinama Liu Liu. And it's mixed up. And you have Koreo, meaning male. And it's important that there's different words for male and female for animals and humans. And there's some switcheroo. And who knows what the original was? I'd love to get the bottle of it. But there you have Reiko for woman. Okay. If it was Zinama Liu Liu, it'd be Reiko, which would be... Can't have the sequence of the vowels. It has to do with the switching of, so it might be a different. I'm Wait, suspicious of this word Reiko is all I'm saying. Tell me what vowel sequence you can't get. What should it have been? You can never get a sequence of two like vowels. Identical vowels. So should, Coreo, was that the, the starting point? Coreo. Oh, okay. The Roviana one, if the Roviana one is the original form, which we do know. Oh, it is. Right, okay. Coreo. Instead, so switch syllables one and two, you would get. Reo. Oh, one, so, oh, he's, wait. You'd get Reiko. <laughs> if you just switched for syllables one and two, you'd get Reiko. But if you That's just right. put syllable one at the end, you get Reiko. Right. I, I'm not saying that there's any connection, and it's the word for male, too. And you'd be like, oh, well, they would never switch up the word for male. Let me tell you another story. So, my men, one of my mentors, uh, Robert Blust, affectionately known as Bob. He has this talk he gives somewhat he used to give somewhat regularly Austrian Eastern Circle, like once every two years or something, about antonymy, which means antonyms. It's about a speech disguise that he believes explains certain cognates in Borneo. The meanings are almost exact opposites, yet they appear to have the sound changes of a cognate. And he believes that part of the speech disguise was speaking in things in opposites, right? And then it became when younger speakers grew up hearing the speech disguise all the time, that's just what they thought the word for it was. So when I was when I was a kid, it was opposite day all the time. Did you ever have opposite day? Yes. Whenever anybody would like say something bad about me, it was opposite day or whatever. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> whatever it was, it was opposite day. I, I remember this. So I'm on the lookout for all this stuff. We like to act like sound change is just this one thing that happens in a vacuum, but the culture has an effect on it. Uh, of course, this is a bit of a digression, but 
we don't have very many R words, and this word Reiko. Yeah, yeah. We begin with an R. As far as Rave and other things, I don't know. We have a fair amount of R words overall, really. Not, not close to zero, really, but I think it is a bit rarer than other initials. And Ruma. Uh, Ruma seems to have. That's an old one. Yeah. That seems to be a cognate, right? Now, do you said what is the word for house in Indonesian? Ruma. Ruma. As an H coda. Okay, let me uh, pull up our whiteboard right quick, and I'm gonna draw a few things. Talking about in the, our Zoom. All right, you do. Do you recall the word for all the words off the top of your head, or do we need to be googling this stuff? Uh, I can Google if you're whiteboard. But, but I'm whiteboard. What, what, I'm Indonesian in one aisle, one column, and I'm gonna have Ganonga in another, and then even farther down. I'll have English. Uh, let's see. You can do a hard return. All right. Next box, I believe. All right, but whatever. Whatever works. There you go. What is the Indonesian word for house? R U M A H. M A H. Yeah. Let's change our color here. That's good. Ooh, not that. Can you see what I'm writing? Yes, but that's better. What's the Ganonga word? It's just Ruma, four letters, right? Just so we can keep track, house. All right, what's the Indonesian word for the number two? Dua, is it? I don't recall. Oh, I think it's dua. D U A. I knew that actually. Let what, me just check. What is the Ganonga word for number two? Kue. No, that's three. Sorry. Kori. Kori. Yeah, all right. Not a good match. Not a good match. Don't expect them all to be cognates, dear learners. <laughs> it's an exercise in frustration. Why don't these match? Stuff happens. Well, I didn't pick the best one. Let me see if I can pick another one here. Do a um, we have Rhea for 3PL. As a pronoun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see it looking like a pronoun to me. Okay, let's look at Austronesian Comparative Dictionary. Like, what, what? They, them. Let me tell you, I'm going to go ahead and just skip some of this, although I'm having a very good fun time, actually. We'll put some of the POC forms here. Proto Oceanic. Importantly, Person of color. the source of POC R is D in Indonesian. Wait, the source of POC R, oh, an original R in POC gives Indonesian D. Yeah. Is that what you're telling me? But what about Rum? Oh, there's two R's. You could get Rumah borrowed into Indonesian from a language that didn't undergo that change. Something that could easily happen. Oh, not that easily. But possible, the same way as we know that Rane can't be a retention of Langit, right? I mean, I know it in Roviana, and I'm suspecting here, uh, based on no. other... No, it was a pretty strong word. I know it in Roviana, that Rane is not a Roviana word. I know it. In Roviana, I can, I can show this very, very clearly, that if it retained Langit, it would at least have the L and the Engma, and there was an RL merger in Polynesian, and they deleted final consonants. So Rane probably came from, could have come from a Polynesian language, could have come from another Eastern Oceanic language uh, also. Um, right, R and Dusa and all that. Okay, let's look at, Dusa. right quickly, let's look at the Proto-Oceanic word for number two. There's not a lot of R words at Oceanic. You see? This is all of them. And I believe the lowercase R is the trilled one. So Rua with, with you. Yeah. It's just going to take a second. So it's not giving us Indonesian, but it will be Dua. We're going all the way up. This is how many witnesses they have for this reconstruction of Dua. And the That's reconstruction the for PMP, I believe, is Dusa. Wow, really? 
It's one of the most widely attested reconstructions in all of Austronesian. Duha for PMP. Sorry, I must have been all the way back to Dusa for Proto Austronesian. Duha for PMP. And then Dua for POC. Okay. Or Rua, excuse me, for POC. Proto mm -hmm. I skipped it because I just saw Chamorro. Or no, Chamorro's PMP. I don't know what I'm thinking. Chamorro is just located in Oceania, but it's actually a PMP language. So there we have it as Rua. Uh, it said a bunch. They don't list Roviana here. Or maybe they do. Maybe we just didn't go far enough because they're so widely attested. Eddie Stone. Eddie Stone. Oh, that's the name of the language. Eddie Stone is right out, right around in that area near Roviana and Ganonga and stuff. So, well, in any case, um, I'm sus suspicious here of <laughs> Ruma. Right. Let's go see if we can find House. So we're going to go to the finder list if I can get my mouse to work. If only. Okay, finder list. We're going to go look for house. Oh, house. Right. We're going to see if we can find Ruma and see what happened to that in Oceanic. Okay. When you think about sounds enough, as I do, you begin to lose your specific spelling ability. Not Capital true for R. Tyler, but he's beast mode. So it's a different R. Aha. Okay. It's the capital R. So this is one of the reasons that two R's might be proposed, even though we skipped Oceania yeah, no. right up here. There's yeah. OC. Makes sense. Let's see if we can find any closely related language that has the R. We have Motu, no. Lao? Lao is too far east. I know how Bob, I mean, Selau. I know how Bob. No, no, S E L A U, Selau. Where are you at? A few Most lines above. Yeah, that yeah is all these ones are good candidates. So um, I don't know where Solomon Island starts in here, but I do know, like, uh, I believe these four are all, and this one too, and Albert. Arosi, all of these are Solomon Island languages. So I'm very convinced now that it is a retention, actually. But we've, we, we're have we seeing a different thing for capital R than lower R. That's mm. pretty cool. And that's kind of what we predicted. Um, going back to our point for today, we did get into story three, but barely. Yeah. Let's see if we can finish this one sentence. And then we might have to uh, call it a day here before too long. Um, today, definitely, we got way more into the history of the language. And I think one of the directions we're going to go in, in, in addition to description is figuring out if we can learn anything about the historical phonology. Okay, I actually don't have a good guess for Rei Regia or Tana or Nongoro, although I do think Tanga is the of thing from that we saw in Roviana, but I'm not certain. And so I'd be happy to just leave it blank until we got another story, which maybe has the... I think if it's going to be something like of, I suspect it's a misspelling. It should just be a single N for a day. But it might also be another word we don't know, and it might mean place. or so. There's too many possibilities now. Endless. It feels like re regia is cause to know. Va re regia is cause to know. They, um, so quick, the things, actually, that's interesting. The, the things heard about Mikania is nominalized. They came to that warrior. Well, so cause come to come. Wait, they cause on. come the mechanic and Nongoro could be also the mm. things heard about him. Right, right. Now, actually, looking at Tana again, that has to mean it has to be a, a word like that, some sort of dictic to that warrior from Nonotongore. It seems very dictic to me. In fact, I, I don't think I can solve any of the three remaining words. Tana. I'd be down to go ahead and guess the next one. Now I, I I have it showing, so but I didn't read it. We do have four hits for Tana. Tana by itself? That is a good question. Tatana we have. Two for Tana by itself. With two an N. Tana by itself. Let's check it out. Next two has one. What will we do now about that warrior of ours they killed? Text three. That warrior. Tana ve sogai tana varene. It could be a dictic there too with just a complex modifier following. That 
that killed Warrior of ours. Tandi Gita is warrior of, of ours for sure. But Tana and Tandi are working together, right? A singular and plural of the same thing in it's our guess here. Let's look at the other Tana example right quick. He took his shield and his battle axe with the hair. Dikwa, that he took that shield. That hmm, what was it? what was Nange? Was that hair or shield or what? This might be good to look at in Flex Project. Yeah, let's go back and we'll look at the. Uh, this is in the second story. Yeah, so that's yeah. Mbutu Mbutu okay. and All right, is it, it's going to be eight. Global, global eight, yep. Yeah. Which is a long-ish paragraph. Sense begins with Tekua. Tekua. There it is. Took their shield. T -H -E -R. We have Tana as his. Oh, that's the one we're after, not Nana. Yeah, yeah. We do have it as his. Does that make sense here? Tana. It does because Tana's not exactly his. It's Daitik. Okay. It's Daitik and possessive uh, at the same time. Think about the way that the adjectives often will have this possessive na at the end of it. It's that kind of thing. It's almost like an agreement or concord system, and it's possessive, but it's doing all these other functions too. So uh, based on this information, I am very likely, and we've noticed the other spelling inconsistencies, I am very prone to analyze Tana as a um, oh, spelling variant. Fabulous. Variant of... Tana, spelling variant. Stuff. Well, we solved one word. <laughs> <laughs> not nothing. It's not nothing. And the thing is, if you get crazy about languages the way Tyler and, are, Tyler and I are, I'm not trying to get as many words as possible. I'm I'm just in, enjoying the pro whatever it is, smell the roses type uh, approach. If we get lost for an hour in the Austronesian Comparative Dictionary, I mean... Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm losing stockholders' money. You know the definition of philology? Love of philology. That's what they'll tell you. <laughs> but there's a good colloquial definition. It's the art of reading slowly. All right. Philology, the non colloquial it's definition. Love, love of words, as love far words, as right? compound. Yeah. Uh, historical study of. The, the lexicon of a language. So. And philology eventually became historical linguistics, or they're pretty separate, or... Because I met a pretty good historical linguist before that was like, oh, I was really into philo philology and kind of invented my own historical linguistics before I learned it was a thing. It was a European person. So mm -hmm. I wondered what the real def difference was. It was such a knowledgeable linguist, so higher level against me that I just believed them that this was the... So I never I, mean, asked. I, would, I wouldn't say they're exactly the same thing. Uh, historical linguistics is going to take take uh, other levels of the grammar into account to phonology as well as historical syntax, historical morphology. But a philologist is just someone who loves all the words of all the languages, something like that, or whatever their chosen languages are. Mm. Well, I hate to skip ahead, but I couldn't help myself. <laughs> you look at Parana. I'm looking at Ngi here. Uh, yes, a new article or something, new agreement. I believe it's a new agreement. And we were last time struggling with the realis, irrealis. And if I recall correctly, we didn't find any third singular um, uh, realis, irrealis distinction. We didn't have enough third singular stuff. Most of it's wrapped up in third plural, right? Mm, and there perceptive. we get third plural subject, which we're guessing is probably realis here as gay. Right? Um, do we get another just CV thing? We think za is probably yeah singular, yeah. also realis. But is it sub? Is it going to refer to humans, or is it non-human things? It must be. For uh, it's been used for humans. I guess I'm curious here because we have ga, which means first singular subject and something. And then we have gay, which means third plural subject, and I guess some aspect. And now we have gi, which seems to be third singular subject. Let's put the translation in. I'm sorry I didn't guess it, but I'm just too curious to guess it. Gi is really tantalizing and interesting. Yeah. I forgive you. Started at Nango and ran down to Rinjo Bangara. So um, now. <laughs> What's what? starting? 
Ran. What? Well, where is Nango and Rinjo Bagara? Oh, wow. <laughs> also true. That might be the... They're in the wrong place. Oh, I'm in the totally wrong place. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. That may also undo my uh, <laughs> belief that I was like, how can this be third singular? We already have third singular, and no, because it's not. So that's why. X3 paragraph two is what we want, actually. Azai Gi. Azai Gi. Gi, there it is. This is a better match. Make sure you grab the right translation when you do this. <laughs> so he spoke down there about Mechania. There we go. Now, what is the causative thing doing in this one? Hore, hore. You know what hore means? Uh, oh, that is descending. That's one of our verbs of, go, of moving downward in, in space. Yeah. Go down, go down. Transitive object. Yeah, going down at some. Well, because so, it cause going uh, down it, cause it going down, basically. Speaking and it goes down. Down the grapevine. So there's a metaphorical use of going yeah. down. I like it. Your speaking caused it to go down to Mechania. Down there about Mechania, that warrior from Nonotongare. Ani. Ani mm -hmm. must be that. We have a good idea that it means that. We have so many dietics. We're very confused. Yes, we do. We sure do. Um... Can't figure out what's going on with Gi, and I hate to say it, but now that no, we have Ngadi too. So we have Ngadi, Gay, Gi. What was your other third? Za. Well, I'm I... all the Q ones. They're all related, I think. It could be giving us I, information. My feeling about the ng is that it's what we get if the person is if the subject is named, and za is an unnamed one. Of course. <laughs> I'm glad you agree. Well, oh. the e I agree <laughs> person marker, but I don't necessarily agree that it's in uh, opposition with za. Let's go back to our lexicon just for a second. Mm -hmm. We start looking at all this fun stuff. Why isn't it giving me? By the way, how many entries do we have at this point? 220, okay. We're getting there. Getting about 10 items, 10, 11 items per session on average. So we get ga for singular subject, and this seems to be, is this the one for, where's first singular? So you can oh, irialis. Mana. Okay. Mana. So mana is irialis. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so maybe there's a realis, irrealis, and something else. But it is conspicuous to me that you get... So gu, meaning first person singular, possessive, that's fine. That comes from ku. It makes total sense. The ga doesn't make as much sense. But once we see we have nga, gay and gi and gadi. So we have gay and gadi. Um, we also have a word ari used with plural. Would, and gi doesn't, can't seem to mean third plural. So, well, this is our first, this is our first encounter okay. of it. It's all, all throughout this text. We'll see. What if the difference between gay and gadi is also a person mark? Eh, I don't know. A bunch. Look, Six times we get gi. I'm going to have to put a pin in it for today because I have <laughs> to move on to my next appointment. But we're going to have to solve this. Uh, it's a problem now. It's a puzzle. So I what? hope that that cliffhanger leaves you binging the next episode by the time you watch this a thousand years in the future. So, all right. With that, I bid you adieu. Farewell. Adieu. And I need to stop recording.